Eugene's macarons look very big. And very, when he very the thick. filling, they're very thick. Yeah, very, very tall. I'm not sure he's going to get 10 in the box. Oh my gosh, he's trying to squeeze one more in her box. Oh. Let's go. I have some ideas, and if I can execute, it's going to be great. I want to go big and bold with my flavors. I'm doing coffee, rum, and chocolate, and I'm doing lavender, orange, and nice. I'm feeling like if I can pull off these flavor combinations, it might overcome any technical difficulties that I have. Come on, 240. Hi there, Becky. What flavors are you doing for us today? I'm going to do a hazelnut praline and a bakewell flavored one. Ah, the bakewell tart. <laughs> Is that an old favorite of yours when you uh, lived back in England? Yeah, everyone loves bagel tarts. So just describe to me those flavors in your macaron that's going to resemble a bagel tart. Because there's a lot of Canadians out there who will have no idea what you're talking about. I'm going to put almond extract in the uh, buttercream. I'm going to put a cherry in the middle and maybe some like flaked almonds. Becky, I'll let you focus on those macarons. And I can't wait to try the bagel tart. Thanks. Carry on. Growing up in England, bagel tarts are like a staple in your cupboard. Like, you just have them all the time. Hey, Eugene. Hi, Chef Alvin. Tell me about these flavors. Uh, I have uh, lime leaves here, as well as lime rind, and uh, coconut that I've uh, dehydrated in the oven already. This Thai lime leaf, beautiful, beautiful. But, OK, it's very, very delicate. When you get that combination, make sure the coconut doesn't overpower that. I'll be sure to taste everything. OK. Your filling better shine. Yes, Chef. Okay. Good luck. Thank you, Chef Alvin. When you pipe your macaron, you want to make sure that it just slumps a little so you have that smooth top. The quality that I look for is a light little crust when you just gently bite into it. And then your filling has to be complementary. It has to add a pop. 30 minutes. You got 30 minutes left. Get them in the oven now. They're moving faster than me. That's OK. I know that I'm a little behind everybody else because I don't know how to make macarons. I think Kagan's got more macaron on his apron than anybody else. I hate baking. This kind of precision is not what I'm known for. I finally have my macarons in the oven, and now I need to start making the filling. You can feel the pressure building already, right? This is where one false move, and you could go down in flames. I run my filling to the fridge, and when I'm coming back to my station, I see the butter still sitting on the counter. Oh, I forgot my butter in the buttercream. So I need to get the butter in the buttercream. I have, like, no time to spare. Just 15 minutes. Come on, guys. Let's go, guys. Boys! Let's go, let's go. Becky's having some trouble, though. Her piping isn't working. The buttercream is too chunky to fit through the piping tip, so I have to use a spoon. I'm really worried about Kagan right now. I don't think he's going to have enough time to finish this challenge. He's looking at the clock intensely. I tell you, he is really worried. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. All 10 have to fit snugly into that box. Eugene's macarons look very big. And very, when he adds very the thick. filling, they're very thick. Yeah, very, very tall. I'm not sure he's going to get 10 in the box. Oh my gosh, he's trying to squeeze one more in her box. Oh. Let's go. One minute, you have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. Get them in the box! Get them in the box now! Oh, God. You got this, Kagan. You got it. Come on, Eugene. Use both hands! Oh, my God! 
I put them in the box, I count them, there's only eight in there. So I've shoved two more in. My macarons look like crap. Come on, Eugene. Come on, Kagan. Take go, what you have and go. Take what you Take have and go. Go, go. Keep going. To the front. Ten, to the front. Nine, to the eight, front. seven, six, Come five, on. five on. four, Come on. three, two, one. Hands up. Close. Good job, guys. Very close. I've just got it all on display here. I have no idea what's in those other two boxes, though. It's time to taste your macarons. Hey, Eugene. When I open this box, I want to see 10 uniform, perfectly shaped macaron. Am I going to see that? I don't believe so, Chef. Well, the first one, not bad. The second one, not bad. Keep going. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. OK. The flavors better knock me out because the shapes are a little off. This is a Thai one, right? Yes, sir. the Thai flavors. I got the Thai lime leaf, got a bit of the coconut. The taste is great. Thank Amazing. You. Eugene. Hi, Chef. All right, I'm going to try the matcha. And this is a chocolate and green tea. And pistachio. Wow, look at that. Nice little surprise. What happened to the middle of it? There might be a uh, little pieces of butter in it because I actually forgot the butter and the buttercream. I can see I that. It. I like where you were going. Great flavor profiles, great combination. Just you failed in the execution. How many are in the box, Becky? Ten. Well, let's see what they look like, shall we? At first glance, I see one that is definitely crushed yeah. and the one adjacent to it. I have to try the bacon tart. It would be rude not to. <laughs> Very gentle crust on the outside is there. That soft, moist center of the macaron itself, beautiful. And then it's that almond flavor that comes through. That is Bequo Tart a la macaron. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. What is the second flavor that you made? Can you remind me? Hazelnut praline. Are you happy with this filling? No. What happened? I wanted the praline crunchy, and it was just like too crunchy. I couldn't pipe it, and then I was just spooning it on. You missed the mark. The filling kind of gets lost. There's not enough of it. Kagan. Chef Michael. Right out of the gate. I'm a little disappointed. I'm not getting a box that I can open up and see what the big surprise is inside. So time really got the better of you, didn't it? How many did you get in the box, Kagan? There are 10. Let me try one, please. Let's take one out of the box. The first one there is orange fennel and lavender. Oh, 
I have to be honest, I think this is a winning flavor combination. Yes, Chef. I love the creaminess, the shades of lavender. You don't bake? Nope. You got 10 in a box. Thank you, Gagan. Thank you, Chef Michael. Gagan. Chef Alvin. Crush one here. What, what's inside here? The coffee? That's the coffee rum. OK, coffee yeah. rum. That's, um, that's drunk because uh, <laughs> it's melting pretty badly. It's too runny. A macaron has to be pretty. Mm -hmm. First of all, the macaron is slightly raw. Yeah. yeah. Yet that problem. I'm not getting the most favorite part. I'm not getting the rum. I'm not getting the coffee. But I'll give you this. You put in maximum effort. But is that enough? The judges aren't especially pleased with any of us. I'm sick to my stomach right now. Perfect macarons rely upon skill and a little bit of magic. And sadly, some of yours lack both. But there was one standout. Becky, you nailed your meringue. It was glossy, perfectly domed, and overshadowed the problems with your filling. Please take off your apron and head on up to the gallery. Thank you. I'm super excited for this. It's pretty cool to be top five. It honestly doesn't feel real. Kagan, Eugene, at this point in the competition, we have to hold you to an even higher standard. There simply is no room for home cooks that can't deliver MasterChef Canada quality. Which is why we feel we have no choice but to say goodbye to. Kagan, we're sorry. Your presentation and flavors were the weakest tonight. Eugene, you are lucky. And your flavors gave you a slight edge. Please take off your apron and head up to the gallery. I'm really grateful for the second chance. I could have gone home today. I need to show the judges I can do better.